Hey everybody, it's Anders here coming to you live from the Baking Steel Studio in Grand Rapids. Grateful for you all to be here today. We're going to record this session, so if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hopefully tell your friends. Uh, today I'm just we're doing a pizza hangout, and what that means is I've got I've got dough hanging out here. I made this dough on Monday, so it's a 48 hour dough. It's using our 72 hour dough recipe, which we can get to, we can get to questions on that later. I've got my steel in the oven. Got two baking steels. I've got a baking steel plus today. I'm making some breads, and I've got my baking steel original top rack and bottom rack preheating for the last one hour to get at 450 degrees Fahrenheit using convection. Super hot. Today I'm going to make a cheese pizza, but I'm making it with a different tomato. I'm testing some Cento tomatoes. These are certified um, San Marzano. I don't know what certified means, but uh, it's like maybe it's the version of organic. Crushed, to, uh, these are whole peeled tomatoes. I, I pulverized them a little bit in the food processor. Let's see, awesome. So a little bit chunky, but great. It tastes, actually tastes great. And that's how we know, by the way. I opened the can up, I added some salt, I pulsed it, I tasted it. They taste awesome. So tomatoes, I've got some fresh mozzarella cheese that I just kind of chopped up. This is the, the mozzarella here. I chopped it into, you know, kind of bite-sized pizzas. I'm going to make this pizza very saucy, which is a, a, a out of my comfort zone. I always say less is more. Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more sauce just for fun today. You guys can watch me do the steps and then we're going to bake it and I'll see you. So let's get right to it. Okay. I think it's probably recording and yes so there's my dough i do baking steel container this is about a 270 gram dough ball been i balled it up this morning it's been resting for about three hours i'll flour up in front of me here a little flour and now remove my dough place it right in my flour And then before I do anything else, I'm going to kind of coat it both sides with flour just so it's not sticking. And still probably a little bit on the cold side, so it's not super supple yet, but it's it's getting, you can see, right? It's really gorgeous dough. Feels like a cloud. So today, um, I'm going to like just press this out really gently. Those bubbles. Keep turning it around. I'm just doing this so I, I know it's not going to stick to my countertop, right? Press it out. Now I could I could leave some room here around the perimeter to create that crust, or I could flatten. It's a dealer's choice. There's no right or wrong answer. If I if I leave something here, I don't top it with any ingredients. It's really going to puff up. So, which I kind of like, like pita bread, right? And this is our 72 hour dough recipe. So it's simple to make, very simple, almost like a no need. And now I'm gonna place it on my knuckles. All right, you can see I'm giving a little bit of a stretch and turn, stretch and turn. See, it's starting to grow a little bit. And I've, I'm gonna stretch this to about, you know, 10 or 11 inches. I, I can see I'm, I'm not going through the dough. I don't wanna put a hole in it. But I'm really grabbing he's doing its thing. You can see how it's stretching a little bit here. It smells nice. So I've got this kind of stretched out. Not beautiful. Put this aside. Let's talk about the peel. I like wood. I put some semolina flour down. I put some flour down. Those are my ball bearings. The, the, between the wood and the dough, I have this this flour, which acts like the ball bearings. So this dough will slide on top. You can see what I mean by that. Dough goes on top and I can slide it. That's really important. If this is your first time seeing this, this is like one of the most important steps for home pizza makers. We do not want to get it stuck before we start putting our toppings on. So be really sure this dough, dough is going to be loose. You can see that size. Now, I like to do this. I like to pinch these edges here a little bit. And what that does, 
it just gives a little bit uniqueness, right? And the cross, you're gonna kind of stretching and pulling a little bit. So each piece is gonna have its own like texture as you bite into it. I might even leave like this area here to be like this big bubble, just to kind of give it this really cool shape. That's it. That awesome, beautiful dough. It's got some bubbles, still proofing. Oh man, it's gonna be great. We're talking about sauce. Let's go really saucy today. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So sauce it up. Really aggressively. And I bring the sauce close to the edge, but not over the edge, just like life. I'm gonna go even a little heavier than this. That's a lot of sauce for me. I always say less is more. That gorgeous. Just to give you an idea of the colors here, look at that. See the reflection of the light hitting it? That gorgeous. Let's sneak some Parmesan underneath here for flavor. And now we're gonna grab our cheese, fresh mozzarella. I'm gonna kind of stick it in the sauce here, right? These are big pieces, small pieces. I don't want my sauce, my cheese to brown. I can kind of coat a little bit in the sauce just to help it, help that from you know browning too quick. That look good. Is that enough cheese? You can see again that light. Isn't that gorgeous? And now I'm gonna give us this little slide again. It's still sliding like a puck. If it's not gonna slide. Now is the time to grab the edge that's not sliding and stick some flour underneath it, okay? And I can stretch it again, right? Gorgeous. So that's my that's my piece. You can see, I've got this, right? It's still sliding really importantly, really important. Okay, and now my oven. I've been preheating at 450 for the last hour on convection bake. I'm gonna switch it over right now to Royal. I on this oven, it's a monogram electric oven. I have broil low and broil high. I'm going broil high. And the reason I preheated at 450 is because these ovens have some like sensors in them. If they get too hot, it will not allow the broiler on. It waits till it cools. So we get sneaky and we preheated at 450. And then when I turn the broiler on, as you can see, in about 30 more seconds, that broiler is going to be firing red hot. And to me, that's an ideal time to launch. That steel is now going to get a little bit hotter than 500 degree or 450. It's going to be closer to 500, 525, ideally for that launch. Two minutes, I'll broil. And then we'll open the oven up. I'll rotate it. And we'll bake it for two more minutes. And we'll have a pizza in about four minutes, which again, in a home environment, any environment, that's a really fast bake. And this has got some really nice sauce on it. It's going to be great. So I'm going to take a peek at my uh, oh, boiler here. It's on. It's red. So let's go inside. I'm going to do this with um, one hand on the camera. So it might be a little shaky. All right. So here we go. Let's go inside my oven. You can see my broiler's on, see how it's red hot. I'm gonna take my peel back of the steel, launch it off. Let's go inside. You can see the broiler. See how it's kicking on like that? Close her up. Two minutes, set. We'll set for two minutes. Two minutes. We'll take another peek inside. You'll see what I'm looking at. We're going to kind of rotate that, turn that broiler off, and we will have, like, a, hopefully the beginnings of an amazing pizza. Uh, let's see. Let's get to some questions while we can. The cheese looks less moist than what can be bought at the store in ball form. Can Is this cheese different? Okay, so this is a whole milk mozzarella. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I buy it. This was I bought at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. It's in this plastic. It's a ball. 
And what I use this for is um, I just, it doesn't have a lot of moisture. Sometimes you're just sitting in a brine and if that's the case, I remove it out of the brine and I, I kind of surround it with like either cheesecloth or paper towel will work. And what that does is it absorbs some of that moisture out. Cause yeah, you're right. There is some, some moisture in there. We want to remove it if you can, but this is fresh moss. Uh, and Jennifer's asking, what should room temp for initial countertop proofing be? Cold house, fall, winter? Okay, so good question. For me, that's about 70 degrees. That's what I was, I, it was 75 in here when I came in the studio. I dropped the AC down to like 71 and that seems to be a good proofing, um, good temperature. Let me go, let's go peek inside the oven. It's almost been two minutes. Let's take a peek. All right, here we go. So here's what I'm looking at. You can see, you can see the color. It's starting to get some color, right? Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is turn my boiler off. I'm gonna go back to convection bake. Well, I didn't even spin this one, by the way. I'm living on the edge. I could just, uh, I could just do this a little bit, right? Give it a little rotation. Dismiss that. I'm gonna go back to, now I can go back to five, say 500. It starts four minutes on. I got two minutes more, so that'll be about a four minute bake. Now the top, because the broiler's off, it might get a little darker, not too much, because I'm, I'm pretty familiar with this oven and the cycles. If I'm working with a new oven, I might peak at one minute just to, just to be sure it's not getting too dark, because that has happened. Always use a timer because the timer is critical. If we if we don't use the timer and I get in, involved in a conversation or answer a question, two minutes can go by like that. And next thing you know, you've burned your pizzas. And I've, I'm sure if you're not burning, you're not learning. So just keep, keep that in mind. But um, it's great. Two minutes seems to be a good cycle for my oven. Let's get to another question. Would you recommend the broiler method for gas ovens or just electric? Sean, great question. I didn't have a choice here. I have one electric oven. That's all I, there's no gas in this wall. So it would be a major project. Um, we just built a house. It's awesome. The kitchen, I've got two ovens. I got a gas and an electric. I wanted both because I love both. There's advantages and disadvantages to, to each, but I feel like gas is awesome because when you turn that broiler on, it kicks in right away. It gets extremely hot and it goes really fast. Electric, I think it has a little bit more consistent bake because that box is a little bit smaller in the wall ovens. I think they're 30 inches wide, so it's not as big. So it really gets a lot of heat in a small amount of area, cooks really fast. You know, so really there's advantages to both. For example, breads, I don't need a gas, I don't need a gas broiler or electric broiler. I just use the oven itself. I hope that answers that. Uh, I have an LG oven. Would the temps be the same? for convection and broiler? Yes. Um, I use convection bake for everything I make, whether it be cookies, pies, anything. So I, and I just, I go full tilt. I keep it at, you know, 450 or 500. That's my oven temperature for whatever I'm making. Let's take a look at this pizza. Let's get this back here. Let's see it. All right, let's take a peek. Oh boy, that's steam. Uh oh. So I got a little aggressive. This is awesome. It's awesome. Let's look. It's I used it uh, probably a little bit too dark, right? Probably. Look at the color, guys. Isn't that awesome? Probably a little bit aggressive on the char. However, I like it. I like it. That cheese melted really nicely inside there. Let's look underneath, too. I'll show you underneath here. Our neat, our crust, beautifully cooked. Oh man, the aroma is amazing. So good. I could now top with some basil if I'd like, right? This is a good time to do it. Maybe a little bit of oil if you like. Um, I'm gonna bring this one home with me a little bit later today so my kids can eat it. So I might not even slice it right now. I'm gonna wait. It travels a little bit easier without um, slicing it first. And I can, I can, heat it up a little bit better that way too thanks jennifer yeah that's awesome guys you can see it's got some really nice color probably a little aggressive on the char i i did 
two minutes under the broiler, you know, if I was really paying attention, I may have turned that broiler off after 90 seconds just to kind of get a little less time. Another thing I can do is typically when I'm making multiple pizzas, like tonight, I'm making pizzas for like five or six guys. I'm going to have both my steels going. I'm going to, after two minutes under the broiler, I'm going to move the top pizza down to the bottom rack. And what that does, two things. One, my bottom steel is now hotter than my top steel. And the top of the pizza is not going to get any darker than when I put it down there because the broiler is, you know, now separated, if you will. It's down here. So we're good. And I feel like I can crank out multiple pizzas in a short amount of time. Um, I love a well-done pizza, a well-done pepperoni pizza, and some hot honey can't be. Yes, great call. Hot honey is amazing. Mike's is probably my go-to on that. This right here, a little drizzle of this at the end, a really good idea. Uh, let's see. My house can get quite hot in the summer, 84 degrees. How will this affect the proof? That's a really good question. And that is a pretty common thing in the summer. It's warmer. We're not cranking our AC in our kitchen, which might not be a really smart idea because you're you know, fighting the heat versus the AC, I would, it would probably, it's going to proof faster. So typically these dough balls today, I let proof for about just, just over three hours. You might see those things proofing in like two hours. I hope that makes sense. Just keep an eye out. I saw a pizza dough recipe using rapid rise yeast. What are your thoughts on this yeast? Would it even work for anything but the same day dough or should not use it at all? So I use... Um, and all, Andrea, all of our recipes are developed around um, using Fleshman's active dry yeast. You can Google um, rapid rise formula. So like, is there any adjustments in the amount of yeast I need to switch to if I'm using rapid rise? I, I forget, I've done, I've done some tests on different yeasts and it's not much. I use the same. We use such a micro amount. It shouldn't make that much of a difference. Um, and Paul is asking, do you keep two steels in your oven, one top and one on the bottom? Yes, Paul, exactly. I'm, let's go inside again. Let me show you guys a quick peek in here. Show you what I, my setup is. Uh, let's see. I've got two steels. Now, I have the baking steel plus on top. If you can see, it's a little bit wider than my original. It's 20 inches wide versus 16 inches for my original. I have close to the top rack and I have close to the bottom rack. That is a pretty ideal setup right there. Two steels, it puts the broiler into play. Um, I've got the, I can use the broiler for the top and then the bottom. And then if I'm making breads or anything else, I'll use that bottom steel. I'll stay away from the top one. Hope that makes sense. It's great. Uh, do you put it on the closest rack to the broiler? John, great question. I have. I have these racks in this monogram ovens have um, bearings on them, so they slide out really easily, which I love. So I'm able with that, able to launch really tight to the broiler without sticking my hand in the oven. I found by using the, that really close setting, I scorched the, I scorched the living daylights out of my dough. It's, you got to be really careful. I feel like the second rack or about seven inches is to be ideal for using the broiler. Uh, the beer, 72-hour dough. Is it possible to ferment in the refrigerator? If so, how can I tell? Also, any adjustments for making pizza on an outdoor? Okay, so we've got two-part question here, Jennifer. So for the 72-hour dough, is it possible to over... Oh, can I over-ferment in the refrigerator? Um, I, by over fermenting, like I find like days four and five, you, depending on the flour that you're using could be a little bit much. If I'm making a beer dough, I'm using a really strong flour shoot go, you know, maybe a goal should be two or three days, anything longer than that. Like what's going to happen is that dough is going to become those glutens very, very weak. You'll find yourself ripping the dough. That's a challenge. So try two, try two days with that. So yeah, I guess you can overproof it or over ferment it and then 
Uh, it, it just tastes a little sour, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, John, I've burnt quite a few pizzas. This one was close. This one was borderline, right? So, all right. So my oven's back at 500, which is awesome. Another thing about this Monogram oven, by the way, and I'm not a sales rep for Monogram. I just like their ovens. My whole new house has got all Monogram in it. Um, I can fire up my ovens from my, my phone, which is incredible from, a, from an app perspective. I can be driving in and then turn my oven on if I forget. Just got to be, be mindful that nothing is inside your oven and your steels are clean. That makes sense. Does anybody else have any questions I can answer for you? Amazing, you guys. Really fun class. Hey, in, in two weeks, we're doing another class. I'm bringing in some a guest, Pizza of Art on Instagram. He's amazing. Uh, he's got like 700,000 followers, just crushes the home pizza game using our steels. He's an amazing guy. Um, we're going to team up and do one of these classes together. It can be really fun. Can't wait. Maybe we'll do a giveaway in that class as well. So make sure you sign up. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't get me get to this question too. And you're asking Kathleen, I didn't get part two, was gas grill? Yes. You can bring your steel outside on the grill and make pizzas. Again, the heat transfer on steel versus stone is super fast, like 20X. So you do not want as much heat outdoors. You probably want to start around 350 to 400. Also remember, gas ovens or grills outside do not convect like gas ovens would. So it's a different, um, it's a different type of bake, if you will. So we like to do like, I do like a grilled pizza. I'll, I'll do like a flatbread and then close the lid. So I'll, I'll cook one side of that um, dough. I'll flip it over and then cook the other side. Add my toppings, close that lid. Let the toppings melt softly and not, not as extreme as the indoors. Um, so there's different styles, if you will. Oh, we get some more questions rolling in. I love it. Uh, do you freeze the dough and take it out when ready to make pizza? Paula, great question. Yes, I love to freeze dough. It works great. If I'm traveling and I want to make dough because I know when I come back, I want to have pizza right away. I think it freezes great up to 30 days. And if I'm freezing dough, and I know I'm freezing dough, I will mix my dough one day. The next day, I'll place that in the fridge. So I've got my batch of dough now in the fridge for call it one more day. I'll make my dough balls, and then I'll freeze those balls right away. And the reason I like to do that is because when now when I take it out to, to thaw, um, it's going to do its final proof after it thaws out, and it's going to be great, up to 30 days. If I do know I'm freezing dough, I might double my yeast. So instead of one gram per 500 grams of flour, I might use two grams, because that yeast will kill off a little bit in the freezer. So if I'm being thoughtful, I know I'm freezing the dough, I will double that content of yeast. Okay, I have guests that are watching their blood sugar levels. Do you have a pizza dough recipe that would work for them? Wow, Jennifer, great question. I'm not the guy for that answer. However, the little experience I have, when I was in Cohasset, Mass, doing dough, like during COVID, we would do dough pickups. I had some friends and I became friends. I had more friends. It was amazing. Um, one of them, one of my friends from high school her daughter or son had diabetes. Again, this is not medical advice. They are, they could eat our dough because we use an organic flour. That has nothing to do with this answer, but I like organic flours. But we we fermented it for two or three days, right? And that means, um, I think it was two days because some people would use a dough. So a two-day fermentation, their son's or daughter who is diabetic would eat this and it did not spike their sugar as much as a typical pizza dough would. So because we fermented for days. So my guess, my guidance would be if you are a diabetic and you can test your blood sugar level and you're okay with, you know, sampling a fermented dough, go for it. Give it a chance. As long as it's not going to affect your health at all. I hope that answers. Um, and Paul's asking, do I thaw frozen dough in the fridge? Yes, ultimately, if it's if I have frozen dough and I'm having pizza on Friday night, Thursday, I'll remove it from the freezer, put it into the fridge, let it thaw out overnight. In a pinch, let's say I forgot, 
um, I'm still okay taking that dough out of the freezer and using it the same day. It just might take three or four hours to thaw out and start the final proof. Just It's gonna take longer than if it wasn't frozen. So it's first it's gonna unfreeze and then brew. That makes sense. Uh, Sean is asking, do I have any recommendations on how to stretch the dough? I just rip through mine using the AT. Oh, interesting. So Sean, as you, if you were here earlier, when I made, when I stretched my dough, because I let it final, I let it final, sorry. When I let it um, final proof, which I balled it up, I let it proof for three or four hours. That's critical. If I skip the final proof and I just made my dough balls, that dough is not going to stretch. It's going to be really tight. Those glutens are now tight and I'm going to be pounding it out, trying to get it to stretch. It just won't stretch. I like a minimum of three hours. In fact, today was like right on the button, three hours, maybe three hours and 10 minutes. Ideally, I want, you know, depending on the temperature, three, three and a half hours to, to let it do its thing. Otherwise, it's going to be very elastic. So, and email me if you have any other questions on that, Sean, Andrus at Baking Steel. I can go into more depth for you, but it should work. Um, and then Jennifer, do you freeze the dough in the dough container? Oh, do you wrap each ball individually? Great question. I personally, I've done both, but I prefer to make my dough balls um, and then freeze those balls right away. I mean, I've done a batch too. You're just going to make sure that completely thaws out before you um, before you go to work, right? Make sense? And then John's asking, pizza steels come in various sizes. Yes. So John, we've got, you know, the original baking steel is still our most popular steel. It's 14 by 16 by quarter inch. It fits in every single oven in the U.S., just about. And it's our most popular size. I'll, I'll, you know, great question though on that. Because there's a follow-up to it. This is a, this is a 16 steel system. So this is also baking steel. We've got peels, wooden peels. Almost all wooden peels that you buy, not just from us, are 14 inches in diameter. So this matches the width of the baking steel. Really, really important because if I use a bigger peel than my steel, it, bec it becomes a problem. So 14 inch peel, matches our 14 inch steel. We make some bigger ones. We make the plus, which is a 15 by 20. I can do two pizzas at a time. And hold, hold on for one second. There is a method to this madness. So the baking steel plus, this is 14 by 20. This matches the size. You can see the taper this edge here. So if I'm making baguettes, no handle, I can kind of just shuffle this into the oven and out. I can do two pizzas at one time, which is really nice. So ideally you want a steel to match and your peel to match up and be the same size. Because if this was say 16 inches wide, my steel's only 14 inches wide, it might be too big. I'm, I'm gonna run into a problem in the oven. So we kind of take, we did that math for you to match up your peel to your steel. Uh, so just be mindful of that. We do make different size steels. Uh, because th this is one, I, I think the plus is predominantly for bread bakers and pizza makers alike, right? It's not ideal to move this plus out onto my grill or on my stovetop because it's so big. I like to leave that one in the oven. The original is 14 by 16. That's more versatile. I can put that on my grill easily or on my campsite. Uh, even on my stovetop, it works great. So really depending on what you're making, that's what um, or what your use is going to be. That's how I determine. If you're not sure, I always, always side with the original. I think it's a, a great choice. I still have, you know, it's, that's predominantly what I cook on almost 100% of the time. How much dinero is the plus, John? I believe it's 159. Um, anybody who's in class here, by the way, just to, just to be here, if you're thinking about buying a steel, use code steel a friend. Um, S-T-E-E-L-A-F-R-I-E-N-D, one word, you'll get a discount, all right, just for showing up at class today. Steal a friend, and we'll do a follow-up with you guys, too. I have the plus on my grill. Oh, awesome, Mitchell. So, yes, so you know, it's big. It's beast, right? It's a much it's a much heftier steel than the original. 
But if you can move around your grill, yeah, you got you're going to be cooking up incredible smash burgers and steaks and a lot of stuff. Um, Monica asking, we have a brand new outdoor gas pizza oven built into our new home. Congratulations. That sounds amazing. That's a nice builder you got there. Um, we burn the bottom of all the pizzas. We've tried yet. The top isn't cooked enough. Ooh, that's a great question. So you're burning the bottom. So right away, my first instinct, whenever I burn, I'm too hot, right? Pretty, I mean, obviously basic math there. It's getting too hot. So I would be, if you put a steel in it at that same temperature, you're really going to burn because the steel transfers energy super fast. I tell people if they're using outdoor ovens with our steel inside, you can you can keep that temperature around four or 500 degrees and it'll work awesome. Um, you might need more details from me, but send me an email, Anders at Baking Steel. I'm happy to kind of walk you through steps that might help. Yeah, I mean, it is heavy, Mitch, totally. Um, I have the cleaning stone you have on your website, but I'm a little nervous to use it and scratch the steel. Oh, great question. These, the, ba the baking steel bricks are phenomenal. These are like pumice stones made out of recycled glass and literally like a pumice stone. I lightly scour my steel. This one's not hot. This is my mini. It sits on my oven all the time. Um, if I'm making like, I'm making maybe some bacon and eggs later for lunch, carnivore, um, right on my mini. Phenomenal. I use my brick on my mini every single time I use it. It's super polished. It might look like surface scratches on here. It does not affect the seasoning at all. Just go light on it. Do not worry about damaging your steel. I highly recommend these things. They are phenomenal um, for everything, not just my steels, but also my grill. I keep one on by my grill outside at home because I, I can easily clean my grill as well or my La Crusade pans, cast iron pans, you name it. Also, these bricks, by the way, if your oven glass gets filthy and do not like um, be careful, but I use these on my glass because it keeps my glass um, clean in my oven. And talk about scratching. You can scratch the glass. So I, I'm not even saying I recommend that. I still use this on my glass. I have a clean oven, clean glass. If you look carefully, I've got some scratches in it. And I don't care because my oven is clean. More important to me. Um, so Monica, yeah, it gets over 700 degrees. So I would drop that temp down to, if it's burning right away, like 500, 550 might be a better starting point for you. And if it, it wood fired, is it easier to control that? Um, and, and Ed is asking, ECD is asking, how would you adjust the pizza baking using a round steel on a big green egg? Great question. The Kamado steel, big green eggs, an incredible combination of products. The big green eggs, amazing. Because they, you know, that's a really nice oven. Those things get scorching hot. The big, and I had a big green egg back in Boston, but the temperature I love on my green egg for pizza making is about 400 degrees. Those do convect pretty well with the lid on. So keep that steel around 400 and just make it like a normal pizza. Anything hotter than that, you can be burning super fast. So again, be mindful of the temp. Drop it down to 400 on our steel. It'll be amazing. Take some pictures too. Incredible questions here, you guys. I love it. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, this may be crazy question. I like crazy. All right, Paula. Do you make Sicilian pizza with your dough? Do you just let it rise? That is a crazy good question. Um, uh, yes. I use a 72 hour dough for virtually all my pizzas. I just don't mix it up that much. Even though we've developed like a New York style, we have a new one coming out soon, but, but predominantly sometimes I don't know what I'm making. I always have dough in my fridge. So if I'm making um, a Sicilian pizza, I will just take a 500 gram piece, 750 grams and push that into my, I'll put some olive oil down in my sheet tray, put my dough there and just kind of let it proof for hours, right, at room temperature. And then after about two or three hours, I'll start to press it out so I can get it edge to edge. Olive oil on top, olive oil on the bottom. It's phenomenal. So yes, your crazy question is a very good one. So yeah, it's the same dough. That makes sense. 
We've got a recipe on our site too. Great question to you guys. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Well, look at Andrew's here. Thank you guys. Amazing class. Great questions. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. If you need anything from me, Andrus at bakingsteel.com. Tell your friends. We'll see you. And we have a lot of guests lined up for the next couple of months. It's going to be really fun. Can't wait. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. You're amazing. You guys are all amazing. We're all, I guess we're all amazing, right? It's a good way to go through life. Thank you, guys. See you soon.